On September 11, 2001, the world changed forever. 19 Al-Qaeda terrorists hijacked four civilian airliners, crashing them into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and thanks to the bravery of the passengers of United Flights 93, a field in Pennsylvania. In all, 2,977 people lost their lives. Now, 23 years later, we interview teachers around Auburn High School to see how 9-11 still affects us today. Um, where were you when the 9-11 attacks happened? I was living in Sarasota, Florida at the time. Um, and it was very uh, interesting because the President of the United States, George W. Bush, was actually in my hometown. Air Force One was at the the runway there in Sarasota Bradenton Airport uh, when all of that went down. Um, and so he was actually giving a speech at one of the elementary schools, Booker Elementary School, which is near the airport. And then when the information came in that we, we had been attacked, they actually rushed him out of that school to the airport. We watched Air Force One actually take off and leave. We later on found out that some of the pilots actually trained in Sarasota County in a town called Venice at a flight school down there. So some of the terrorists actually trained and learned how to fly those planes right there <laughs> where I'm from. So yeah. it's pretty crazy. Um, like, how do you feel 9-11 affected the United States after it was over? What are some of the things that you saw? Oh, wow. There was uh, an in intense amount of fear. Uh, a lot of Americans were concerned that there were a lot of Al-Qaeda cells here. Um, and you know the U.S. government was trying to do everything it could to try and you know quell those fears. And uh, of course, later on we get the controversial Patriot Act that was passed as a result of it. And a lot of, it's very controversial because a lot of people feel that it violates the Fourth Amendment right of the United States Constitution on reasonable search and seizure. And it's still a uh, hot topic today as a result of that. Um, did you personally know anyone affected by 9-11, such as a family member or a friend or anyone that you knew? Yes, uh, one of my neighbors, uh, years, I would say uh, it's about five years later, uh, we built a house in the, in the, in the neighborhood and uh, one of the neighbors that I met, he um, was a firefighter and he was actually there uh, when it went down and so it affected him so much he lost a lot of his friends he actually suffered a lung disease because of inhaling all of the, the debris and everything and so he retired early and I remember um, what actually sparked the whole conversation I remember looking in his garage and he had his firefighter uniform hanging up the one that he wore that day so I spoke to him about it he told me you know the horrible things that happened that day and how he survived it but a lot of his friends had died that day so it was uh, pretty intense next we interviewed Herr Martin Auburn High School's German teacher about his experiences where were you when the 9-11 attacks happened I was um, walking into a coffee shop in downtown Auburn uh, where I was working at the time and uh, it's now Jimmy John's sandwich shop but at the time it was called beignet cafe and this was a long time ago, and <clears throat> I remember walking in and going behind the counter, and uh, my boss was looking at the television, and shortly thereafter, I found out what was going on. Uh, about a little later that afternoon, excuse me, a little later that morning, I went to my English grad class at Auburn University, and there was a discussion about what was going on, and I came more and more to the awareness of what really had taken place and um, it was just basically a day of being in shock and sort of taking it all in, taking in other people's reactions to it as well and just, you know, it became, it became uh, just very real. Okay. How do you feel 9-11 affected the United States, like right after it? The effects of 9-11 were, I mean, it, the way that it came to the United States, I think it changed the way we saw, um, at least for my generation, it changed the way we began to view Middle Eastern um, relations in a very real way. I remember that all of a sudden, um, as a foreign language teacher, I remember that uh, Arabic uh, language was something that was spiking through the roof as far as enrollments into different colleges and all of a sudden there was a new awareness of Middle Eastern relations not just being uh, put up on the the news in this but it was like there was a very real way in which Middle Eastern culture was now something that we were dealing with 
Uh, and it was sort of, the, in one way, it was a loss of 80s and 90s commercialism that we had in the, you know, it was sort of just like this idea that we're going to grow into this new world of tech stocks and we're going to do this, you know, understand the new uh, realm of the internet. And all of a sudden, shortly after this 9-11 attack, you know, there was a... Uh, um, tech stocks actually dropped. In other words, there was this bubble that burst and all of a sudden there was an economic fallout. And so I think the fallout, I think that the tech, the dot-com bubble that happened, I think it was a way of waking up America into really getting to see um, how vulnerable we were on one level. And it wasn't, it was sort of like the end of America, sort of an American identity that up through the eighties and the nineties, we sort of, that we had. And it was really a wake up call of who we stood as a global entity, as a player among many other players, um, as a vulnerable one. And yet also as a country that really needed some definition on where to go and how to, how to, how do you emerge as a winning player? How do you think 9-11 uh, continues to affect America? I think it's still, you know, the realization, the, the fact that it's something that we, you know, we celebrate, that we celebrate or what we commemorate, not really celebrate, there's no celebration, but the commemoration of it, the fact that we are, we still regard it as the largest, um, attack on human soil since Pearl Harbor. When you think of those numbers, when you think about what that means, um, when you think of the reasons why, every year there's a chance to reflect and to become better, know, better knowing or more, I guess, more educated or just, you know, it's a place where you get to see, wow, this is what we mean to some people who consider us either threatening or who consider us, um, you know, as anti, but yet it really gets us to reconsider who we are and what our true values are and what values do we have as Americans that galvanize us together uh, across divides. Um, yeah, it's just, and it's terri it is terror, I don't want to say it's, it's, um, it's not terrific, it's something horrific um, and, uh, it's still something that shocks. There are many years right after it that I wasn't, I'm sort of blind to it, but now it seems like the commemorations and things just seem a little bit more like a little bit more real. Um, and I don't know if that's because you can watch things on YouTube and you can see actual more, uh, close up, you know, pinpointed focal kinds of videos but it just seems like it's more real. But again, it's about us being able to understand who we are as Americans and what unifies us um, and what puts us all in the same in the same category. Did you know anyone that was like affected by it? Like um, my dad was working in the Pentagon um, when that went down. He had just moved a month prior to Washington D.C. and was working with President Bush. Um, on his staff, and he was predominantly at Andrews Air Force Base, but had been there at Pen the Pentagon, and so for him, it was, it was very close to him when that was going down, and um, the security that came after was never the same. Uh, the security and the, the heightening of, you know, the ways to get into the base, the ways to get around, dealing with the whole threat con and the threat so that was something that was very new and it was something that we had to deal with. Um, I didn't know anybody particularly who, or specifically personally who was affected. I know that my good friends in New York who lived in Staten Island at the time, they, they were talking about how for weeks and weeks and you know months after the fact, the bells in their neighborhood and their churches kept ringing for the constant number of vigils and the, the funeral services that were happening and the memorial serv services that were happening. Um, so that was my closest personal contact uh, connection is just through acquaintances and family in DC. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? No.
Thank you. You're welcome. Last, we interviewed Mrs. Foster, Auburn High School's AP government teacher, about what September 11th was like for her. Um, so on 9-11, I was teaching. Um, I was an English teacher at the high school where I had graduated and I had sophomores and seniors. And that morning, um, there was a lot of buzz kind of around the school and in our town because President Bush was very close to where we were. The school where he was that morning was like six miles from where we were. It was right across the city. You were the second person that I've interviewed that was in Florida where Bush was when it happened. Did you talk to you? I talked to uh, Mr. Coach Pettis? Yeah. So we're from the same town. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So I was teaching at Manatee High School, which is where I graduated. And um, so my kids came in that morning. I had a portable classroom uh, that year. And so my kids were coming in and, you know, they come in full of themselves and all hyped up and everything and loud and kind of boisterous. And this one kid, this one young man, his name was Will, um, he knew the president was nearby and in town. And he's like, oh, can I call the president on the phone? And, you know, I'm like, yeah, you call the president on the phone. And so he called the hotel where he had stayed, which is a place called the Colony Resort on Longboat Key. And I guess the lady who answered the phone was kind of humoring him, you know. And she's like, oh, he's already left for the day. I'm sorry. You know, you'll have to leave a message. So every, you know, they were laughing about that and, oh, the president's going to call you back, you know, just goofing off. And so we were having a test that day. The kids had been studying like Edgar Allan Poe. And so I got my test out and the test was out for maybe 10 minutes or so and um, my phone in my classroom rang and it was my mom and she didn't even say hello she just said do you have a tv in your room and i said well i've got a class right now and she goes do you have a tv in your room and i said well yeah and she goes turn it on and she hung up and there wasn't any she didn't say anything else and i didn't have time to ask any more questions and i thought well that was weird so I had one of those big tube TVs that sat on one of the you know plastic or the big black um, like the carts. carts. Yeah. yeah. And so I turned it away from the students and turned it on and you know, muted it and everything. And of course, you know, there's one of the Twin Towers on fire and you're trying to like piece together what happened. And that was before they had the thing running across. Actually, that was the day that the thing running across the bottom of the screen um, debuted because there was just so much information to get out. Um, but you know, it was muted. So I'm trying to figure out like what was going on and whatever happened to my face, you know, however I was reacting and however long I was staring at it must've been, um, longer than I thought, because when I looked up, when I kind of snapped out of it and I thought, Oh, the kids, I kind of looked, looked over and they were all staring at me and I didn't really know really what else to do other than just kind of turn the TV around. I didn't have any explanation. So we turned it up and, you know, of course everybody forgot about the test and that was, you know, wasn't, wasn't important anymore. And so the analysts or the, the anchors were talking about how, um, you know, how could, it, how could this accident happen? And it's such a beautiful day and a pilot couldn't make a mistake like this. And um, of course planes had hit the Empire State Building, you know, before. Um, in bad weather or at one time um, it was someone flying into the building intentionally but it was a very small plane and so while they're talking about that and interviewing you know, people who are aviation experts you know other pilots retired pilots um, the second plane hits the second tower and there was a few seconds of kind of did I, did I just see that I know I just saw that, but like, it doesn't make sense when my brain is telling me I saw. And it, I think it was that way for pretty much, you know, by that point, pretty much everybody's watching TV. And so everybody experienced that together. And so there's this, this period where there's confusion and then you kind of have to accept what you saw. And then the next step is, what does this mean? What is the conclusion? What do I have to conclude about this information that I just absorbed, right? And of course, the obvious conclusion that you have to make is that it wasn't an accident at all. And if that is the case, then what's, what is the next step? What is the next thing that might happen? So it wasn't, but maybe 30 seconds after that, you have to realize, oh, the president's right down the road. 
if it is a terrorist attack, why is he so close to us? And then you start to feel maybe a little vulnerable yourself, right? And maybe these things that are happening on TV are not that far away from you, right? And so it was maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes after that, we heard this just thunderous roar over the top of our school and it was Air Force One taking off from the airport. So, you know, the rest of the day was um, just a lot of, a lot of confusion, um, I think fear for the families. And of course, you know, before the towers fell, all of the people who were trapped up top and um, watching some of those people make the decision to jump out of the buildings, um, just an experience that you don't really know how to describe or explain. Um, there are a few days in history where, you know, the world works a certain way when you wake up in the morning and, you know, over the next few hours, you know, by the end of the day, for sure, it doesn't work that way anymore and it never will again. And 9-11 was one of those days. And before my generation, you know, people talked about the Kennedy assassination that way, that that was a similar day where people thought about the world and the government and the way things happened in a certain way. And the Kennedy assassination changed all of that, you know, um, and, it, and it all, all happened in one day. So, you know, the, the immediate impacts of 9-11, I think were um, kind of a, a, a realization that maybe we're not as insulated from terrible things as we would like to think we are. Um, and certainly, you know, the terrorist attacks that have taken place in our country um, demonstrate that. You know, we, I think we like to think that terrible things happen elsewhere, but you know, 9-11 showed us in a very um, jarring, startling way that those things can happen here too. And so um, reshaping the way the world works, reshaping the way we think about our own safety, of course, those things were reflected in public policies. Um, because when people don't feel safe, they expect the government to take steps to make them safe. And the government can do that, but it comes at the expense of other things, like people's civil liberties, right? And so then we entered into a period where the government maybe was, you know, not maybe, but definitely being a lot more aggressive in um, patrolling the, the, uh, the need for national security. And in some cases, um, you know, looking at people who were not involved in terrorist activity, but as if they might be. So um, those first few months for sure were very scary. And, you know, as the years passed and there were not additional attacks domestically, um, I think people began to develop maybe a more of a sense of complacency maybe this idea that, oh, well, that was just a one-off or, you know, now it's over, we don't have to worry about it anymore. And then you saw that reflected in the public policies too. The government began to pull back. Um, the searches at the airport weren't quite so uh, invasive. And to this day, those policies continue to evolve um, depending on what the, the public demand for them is and also what, you know, the government can do within the bounds of the constitution what kinds of um, policies, what kinds of searches, what kinds of, um, you know, surveillance activities are um, allowed, are um, constitutional. So, um, you know, my, the only other thing um, to mention was I was expecting my first child on 9-11. Oh. I was seven months pregnant with my first child and I had been in New York six weeks ahead of that. Um, and that was my first trip to New York. Um, I had never been to, you know, anywhere up north. I had never been up there, so um, my friend was getting married up there, and so we took one day and went into the city, and we went up to the Empire State, State Building and did the observation deck, and then we were gonna go out to the Statue of Liberty. And of course, the subway goes right by the World Trade Center. And so we had a conversation on the way down there, like, oh, should we go up to the World Trade Center? They have this great observation deck and they have this you know, restaurant, you know, Windows of the World. And we decided against it because we had just stood in line at the Empire State Building and we thought, oh, we'll just get it next time. 
And um, I remember on the flight back, there was a magazine in the seat back pocket and I was just kind of flipping through it. Like, I don't know, was it was Newsweek or something like that. But there was this story about this guy with a name that was very unfamiliar to me. But the story was about how the government had lost track of him and um, they were concerned about him and he might be trouble. And they were concerned enough that they had posted like a $1 million reward for his capture, you know, information leading to him. And I thought, a million dollars for somebody most people have never heard of? Like, who is this guy? And I just remember thinking that was really weird. And I closed the magazine and put it back in the seat back pocket and didn't think about it again until about noon on September 11th, when the anchors began to say his name because they were interviewing then people from, you know, the government, national security folks who were saying, yeah, this guy Osama bin Laden, you know, he leads this group called Al Qaeda. And I, I remember thinking, that's that guy. I guess they didn't find him. So yeah, it was a, it was a, a day that definitely reshaped the way people went about their lives. You know, a lot of the families, um, you know, almost 3,000 families losing loved ones in that moment, in those moments. Um, some who knew probably what was going to happen to them, you know, Flight 93. By the time, you know, that, that plane is kind of in trouble, all these other things have happened at the Pentagon and, at, and in New York. And so they had a had a realization i think a sense of what was going to happen to them but for most other people who you know went through it that day they they didn't know until it was happening and um you know just a reminder that you want to you want to live consciously you know and, and make decisions that you feel like you know if you find yourself in that situation and when the end comes you can be proud of what you did and you can leave a good legacy behind you. But also, you know, what are your obligations if you did live through it? Um, what are your obligations to people who didn't? And to help them understand it and hopefully um, create a better community, you know, nearby with your circle of influence, but also overall the country, you know, and improve things to where hopefully that doesn't happen again and god forbid it ever does you know we pull together like like we did after after that which seems hard to believe you know if we could ever all get back on the same page the way things are now but um that would be the idea thank you so much yeah thank you we'd like to thank mr pettis Hare martin and mrs foster for lending their time and stories for this program to quote george bush None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in this world. Thank you.